Most of my work concentrates on social issues, poverty being one of them, and all the interrelated issues to do with poverty. A few years back, at the beginning of austerity in Britain, I was asked to travel the country interviewing people about what was happening, where the damage was being done, what the likely outcomes are going to be of those policies and those cuts down the years. One of the things that came out of that was a sense that people who were bearing the brunt of those policies, people who were either in poverty or on the breadline, felt that they were being demonised um, within their society. They felt that they were being scapegoated, um, that they were being used as props to justify unnecessary cuts. Um, we saw terms like scrounger and skyver and striver all begin to get um, move into common parlance. There was a, a real feeling from people that it was reducing empathy in the society. Um, so I wanted to do more on that. I wanted to dig a bit deeper and find out what was behind that. We have short film, we have video, audio, animation, poetry, all kinds of ways of expressing a different kind of story that you know, demystifies it to a degree, but also challenges some of the myths. So Project Twisted is basically trying to unpick that narrative um, that to be poor is to be at fault individually. So I wanted to find a way to challenge that narrative um, because in my experience of reporting all of these years, it doesn't stack up with the reality that I see. I myself grew up in poverty, um, so I have first-hand experience of it. So I wanted to try and find a way to um, reintroduce some dignity into this discussion and to reduce stereotypes. We've got an animation from the comedian and animator Howard Reed, where he's taken a story of one of the women I interviewed on Skid Row in Los Angeles, who became a mosaic artist, and he's animated her. My name is June Cigar. I'm a piece by piece artisan for the Star Apartments on Skid Row Housing Trust in Los Angeles, California. Graphic artist called Shane Pangborn, where we imagine the, the typical low income family that debunks the myths um, around what it's like to live in those circumstances. I've been interviewing people across, in different parts of America and in the UK. In this peacetime country that is somehow more fractured than it ever was during two world wars. In the effort to please all the parties, segregation has become the prevailing solution. They're trying to put me to the test, but I dropped out of college, I ain't ready for that yet. Yeah, still. I got my common sense, you got a sports B-Tech and cat butter bread, the wheels on the bus go around. My name is Jamila Jamil, and I'm an actress and an activist. Despite my accent, which is an accent I developed at 11 um, so that I could fit in at my fancy secondary school, I grew up with no money and I was raised by a single mother on, and we relied on the council to provide us with housing. I grew up in a single parent home. She raised me and my brother and then, like I said, busted her ass every day, never had caught a break. And we almost had our home foreclosed on, I don't know how many times, and then she had to file for bankruptcy. When, you know, you've got less than $20,000 a year coming in, as opposed to other people who's got 50, 60, 80, 100,000 coming in, and you're going to school with these people, and they're looking at you like, why don't you have a nice car? And like, you have no clue how I live, how I grew up, <laughs> and that kills me. A few of us have grown up on like council estates and stuff, and I think when it's around music and performance, I think that people tend to listen a bit more. You want to hide this thing. Like, I felt ashamed of it. I felt ashamed of being poor. Hello, my name is Masuda Snaith, and today I'm doing a video for Project Twist It, who are challenging the way we talk about poverty. So I grew up on a council estate to a single parent mother who was living on benefits, and there were two things I really noticed growing up. One was that I was very aware of being poor and separated from mainstream society. And secondly, that there was this overriding image of council estates that were in the media that was largely based around drugs, gang violence and benefit fraud. And I remember on my first day in secondary school when I went to a school that was not in my council estate but in the neighbouring community, a girl sat next to me and when she found out I was from the estate the very first question she asked me was, did I carry a knife? 
And that was quite shocking to me because I didn't know anybody who carried a knife. My name is Linda Tirado. I'm a writer. I live in the woods uh, and drink whiskey in keeping with my idiom. Um, and I write about how much it sucks to be poor. I live in Ohio, um, but I live in the West Virginia bit. My Walmart is over the Ohio River, so like technically I'm an Ohioan, but culturally West Virginian. I'm from Utah originally, so I'm a mountain girl. So I was a night cook in a tiny town in Utah, worked at an overnight shift at a diner, and I uh, told people on the internet that it sucked to be poor, which for some reason people considered news, and then uh, the very long internet comment I had written uh, was taken to be an essay and went very viral and three weeks later I had a book deal so then I wrote a book um, because I'm not stupid and they offered me money so I took it and ever since then I've been a writer because my book was largely about how much the service industry sucks and it turns out you're not really terribly hireable in the service industry if you famously will write books about how much your bosses suck. There's two words that apply to my life and they were a perfect descriptor in their totality and one is exhausted and the other is hopeless which I mean I, I worked to essentially meaningless meaningless part-time jobs because it was the work I could get took care of my husband and kids and then I get up the next day and do it all over again I mean I'd, I'd have a 16-hour work day on an average day and I'd come home with you know a hundred bucks to show for it and with that I'm supposed to make some kind of a life which <laughs> nope when I cook occasionally I have to sort of sometimes shrink the portions for everyone to sort of make it around everyone because we're quite a big family. I started writing for myself uh, because I couldn't find work as a director and I originally trained as a theatre director. Um, I couldn't find anything that I was passionate enough about to direct I suppose. There was nothing out there at that time, and this is going back 10 years ago, that represented me. And as, an, as a Northern Irish person as well, there was nothing from my region that represented me. Um, and that's why I started to write, I guess, the way that I write and write for people from the working class minorities. And it is a gross minority on stage. In the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival, um, one of the things we've been clear on is that we have to shift the narrative the narrative uh, because if you don't shift the narrative, but you can't do that without shifting the narrators, right? In middle class language, middle class, middle class, but you have 43.5% of your country poor and in low, poor or low income. And then, for instance, last year, two years ago, we go through a presidential election, 26, by my count, maybe more, maybe a little less, 26 presidential debate primary and, and not one hour on poverty something and low and low wealth that's impacting 43.5 percent of your country whatever people call themselves progressives or whatever name we would be foolish to then stay in silos